We've looked at all the air-to-air -air combat the silver screen has had to offer and chosen our favorites before, but big things keep happening in Cinema Skies, so we're here with a refresh. These are our new picks for the top 10 aerial dogfights of all time. move through time periods mostly chronologically on this list, so starting things off, we're taking a thorough look at the Renaissance era. Great! Well, having covered that, we're looking next to World War I. There have been some relatively recent takes on aerial combat in the Great War in stunning color and staggeringly creative CGI in films like Flyboys and The Red Baron that render this century-old war in modern action style, but frankly, for World War I especially, we just prefer the old-school look. The Blue Max and Ace is High both make a fantastic compromise between early visual effects and actual aerial footage, and we are continuously astonished by Howard Hughes' insanely ambitious ability to darken the sky with his enormous dogfights in Dawn Patrol and Hell's Angels. But as far as World War I goes, we still don't think it gets any better than the very first dogfight from Hollywood's very first Academy Award winner, Wings. World War I is the perfect period for aerial dogfights done in silent fashion. Without radios, there was no need for dialogue, and the action moves slowly enough and happens at close enough range that, compared to later engagements, BVR at Mach 1, there's a little need for pilot chatter to orient us as to what's happening. And in that respect, Wings, the epic story of a love triangle cut in two by the war, is just the best of the best. Literally decades ahead of its time, it practically invented aerial cinematography, at least as far as combat was concerned. Most of the cinematic grammar we still use when shooting fighter pilot scenes today was created here. Directed by William Wellman, a actual pilot in actual World War I, the film is just about as real as it gets. Shot with real military planes and pilots from the Air Corps, the predecessor to the Air Force, an unprecedented percentage of the footage is actually shot in the actual air, often with actors actually flying the actual planes, with meticulous compositions of wingmen or pursuers in the very same frame behind them without any visual effects, tricks, or rear projection, just composed in mid-air for each shot. Contrast these amazing close-ups with the astonishing wide shots of highly choreographed circle fights of dozens of combatants at a time, so clearly communicating the shape of the battlefield for which they often waited weeks for the right cloud cover to lend the flying its sense of reference and motion, Wings is an utterly astonishing accomplishment, hardly beaten to this day and a must include on any dogfight list. Next up, we're fast-forwarding a decade or two, passing by the great Waldo Pepper in a rare but phenomenal interbellum dogfight without guns, and landing at World War II's European theater. And here, Red Tails stands out with the best of the full CGI dogfights, updating the Tuskegee Airmen into the 21st century. Dunkirk is a new entrant since our last version of the list, and its real-deal IMAX footage is absolutely stunning. However, we think it's a little more successful as a structural element in the greater story than as standalone action-packed dogfight. 12 O'Clock High built real World War II archival into its narrative to deliver some action that's frankly kind of f***ed up upon reflection. The War Lover gives us a great window into the flying fortress versus fighter duels that took place over Europe, as did the Memphis Bell, which we chose on our last iteration of this list. But upon re-evaluation, we think we ever so slightly prefer the climactic dogfight of the Battle of Britain. The dogfighting sequences of the Battle of Britain and Memphis Bell both offer reverse perspectives on fighters attempting to interdict an attack run. Memphis Bell put us inside an unescorted American B-17 bomber under attack, while the Battle of Britain instead located us inside the cockpits of the intercepting Spitfires. Both films focus on cooperation in aerial combat, but in two very different ways. And while Memphis Bell's air battles are deeply rewarding in the intership coordination, Battle of Britain's final battle, with no dialogue or sound effects but for the roaring classical score, is one of cinema's all-time best. 
Battle of Britain's camera swoops and soars like its heroes, each in their own aerial corvette, meticulously restored for the shooting of the film nimbly jockeying for guns on position. Theirs is a world of agile hit and runs and desperately fragile vulnerability to often a single well-placed counterattack. But it is the music's placement at the forefront of the sequence that tells the dramatic story of the aerial carnage better than any explanatory dialogue or intertitle ever could. Much like ballet, the drama is rendered clearest through music. It is a rare dogfight that is both poetic and climactic, but the Battle of Britain pulls it off and then some, which is why it belongs on any list of the all-time greats. While the Battle of Britain was raging in Europe, an entirely different set of battles colored the skies in the Pacific theater, and Hollywood made the movies to match. There aren't quite as many entrants here. The kinetic but silly Pearl Harbor has dogfights over both oceans. Wild Blue Yonder and Unbroken both have great bomber-centric moments, as does Howard Hawks' Air Force. While both versions of Midway have worthy plane v ship action, but there is one Pacific theater film that stands out way above the rest, and that's been the case for many years running. Our pick once again, Tora Tora Tora. Telling the two-sided story of the attack on Pearl Harbor, Tora 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 is a rare American-Japanese co-production where the film's opposing perspectives are shot by the filmmakers from each respective country, including an uncredited Akira Kurosawa who left the project early into filming because what about this movie sounds like it makes any sense for Akira Kurosawa to direct it? And even before we arrive at the film's primary dogfight, the craft is absolutely stunning. Combining enormous efforts in historical restoration, unusually good visual effects for the era, and stunningly accurate model making, the film is a true epic. But eventually, the Americans get a few planes up, and the film extends its significant craft into aerial combat, maneuvering, exploding, plunging and plummeting through the clouds over Hawaii, and inspiring Michael Bay to say, wouldn't this all look great if it were much shakier? Maybe not, but Tora 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 is amazing and still well worth the watch. Of course, there's more to dogfighting than just the American Allied perspective. Foreign films have long given us the view from the other cockpit too. From Germany, dogfights in films like The Crew of the Dora and especially The Star of Africa are worth watching, albeit certainly lower budget. From Russia, we love the wildly kinetic montage of the dogfights in Only Old Men Are Going to Battle. From Japan, Colonel Tateo Kato's Flying Squadron. And, for those we love, both have some scenes worth seeing, topped by The Eternal Zero which we picked on our last iteration of this list. However, this time, it's a lesser-known Czech film called The Dark Blue World, whose dogfights we think just can't be beat. And it's two o'clock high. We have company, sir. How many? Three, no, four Messerschmitts. Dark Blue World tells the story of disbanded Czechoslovakian pilots escaped after their country's surrender to Germany, who joined and flew with the British Royal Air Force. All of the film's flight sequences are excellently done, brief and sparring, but always for maximum narrative impact. But it is a mid-film escort mission protecting a bomber with an engine out from four attacking Messerschmitts that is the film's action highlight. Perfectly integrating individual character arcs into the overall tactics of the scene, the encounter balances growing camaraderie with continuing communication struggles to deliver a victory that feels genuinely hard won. The tension added by intercutting with an anxious control room is a welcome addition, while the combat itself deftly balances visual effect flourishes atop mostly real and completely fantastic fighter footage to create a gripping piece of cinema. While not technically dogfights themselves, action sequences built around air-to-ground sorties trade in such a similar type of viewing pleasure that it would be crazy not to include any on our list. Sure, they're not air-to-air, -air, but they scratch the same itch. Behind Enemy Lines opens with a slightly unrealistic but highly tense duel between a Super Hornet and Sam Sight. 633 Squadron sees an intrepid bombing run on a ferociously defended rocket fuel factory. 
While the Dam Bursters, well, you'll never guess what they do. We Were Soldiers sees Vietnam-era close air support gone wrong. Flight of the Intruder pits an A6 against an AA battery in epic over-the-top fashion. However, for us, the all-time greatest air-to-ground sequence has to be the enormous Korean War attack run in the bridges at Toko Ri. After a massive build-up to the third act set piece, characters and audiences alike have been set up to brace themselves for a soberingly dangerous attack run on a series of impenetrably defended bridges. Expectations are high, and it's hard to imagine an aerial sequence shot with the technology of the 50s to deliver on the promise. And then the bombing run starts. A squadron of 12 Grumman Panthers make their attack runs while supported by another squadron's seed. Each run is beyond perilous, shot primarily in stunning POV through clouds of practical pyrotechnics that are way too close for comfort. And while it all looks astonishingly real, much of this sequence is actually model work. Built on a 200 foot long set at 1 12th scale with model Panthers pulled on wires shot from an actual helicopter, the model work is almost indistinguishable from the aerial footage, an achievement that won the film a special effects Oscar. It is all tied together by a fantastically immersive sound mix for a ground attack experience that is cinema's closest thing to actually being there. Next up, we're turning back to dogfighting in the Cold War. And I know, I know, there's a pretty obvious pick here, but full disclosure, we're not going to make it. As much as we love the movie Top Gun, and we really, really love it, it's just too obvious. So, what could we pick instead? Maybe tagging one of the equally silly dogfights from Iron Eagle would make all three of you who religiously prefer it to Top Gun extremely satisfied. Or maybe the purposefully absurd aerial tactics of Hot Shots. We do adore Hot Shots. <clears throat> Honestly, the Final Countdown's one mini dogfight might even be the best of the bunch. It's certainly some of the best looking footage of the Tomcat there is out there, but with only one World War II era zeros as opponents, it's over just as soon as it starts. We could look to another early Korean War film, the little known and much underappreciated Hunters. However, god damn it, we just can't do it. Obvious or no, we're picking the final dogfight from Top Gun after all. A rescue operation is to begin within the hour. Your mission is to give air support to that rescue. A mix in the area and tensions are high. If you witness a hostile act, you will return fire. Those MiGs carry the Exocet anti-ship missile. They can fire that missile from 100 miles away. Gentlemen, this is the real thing. This is what you've been trained for. You are America's best. Make us proud. The list of things wrong with Top Gun is almost endless. The formations and the combat are way too close. It's not just within visual range, it's practically within odor range. The maneuvering is a nonsensical sequence of aileron rolls. The dialogue is overly didactic to cover the fact that it's often difficult to determine where the planes are in proximity to each other. They take their masks off in low pressure environments. The knobs and switches they use have nothing to do with what they're using them for. And yet, and yet, where it's bad, it's silly, but where it's good, it's unforgettable. It's extraordinarily entertaining, unbelievably badass. It reignited an entire genre, was the best piece of recruitment propaganda the Air Force never made, is endlessly quotable, infinitely memorable, not so subtly homoerotic, and a really goddamn good time. If you haven't guessed by now, we strongly prefer aerial dogfights shot with real airplanes to those created in post. There's just something lost in the CGI of it that animators haven't quite figured out yet, except, of course, when they're animating the whole thing. We're referring here to animated dogfights. Because once you cut free of reality, you're free to imagine all different kinds of aerial insanities that live action has deprived us of. Fighter planes versus aliens? Why not? Battling giant insects? Sure. A pig in a steampunk warplane? You bet. The various Macross series have given us countless dogfights worth writing home about. Cowboy Bebop's Mad Pursuit just crackles with jazzy intensity. Skycrawlers really gives a new meaning to the term Flying Fortress, and oh yeah, it's beautiful. While Paths of Hate mixes its beauty in with brutality in wallpaper-worthy art style. Pat Labor 2 would have one of the most intense dogfights we'd ever seen if it weren't for the fact that there wasn't any actual combat, but it still kicks ass. But this time we're going with the insane opening dogfight at the beginning of the original Area 88, Act 3.
Beginning with a haunting pre-dawn ingress, this dogfight is over seven minutes of animated fighter pilot insanity. I mean, where else can you find a Tomcat flying alongside a Phantom flying with a Skyhawk, with an Israeli Kfir and two Hornets? Only in Area 88, the fictional Middle Eastern Mercenary Air Force Base where you either fly or you die. So yeah, it's clearly absurd, but in a lot of ways it's actually unusually accurate. Area 88 is one of very few films to begin its dogfights with a beyond visual range standoff. Take the time for everyone to crank and beam and go defensive to defeat enemy missiles before finally going guns on in the merge. It's got amazing animation, balls to the wall action, and a ton of carnage. And it's as good as any live action dogfight on this list. Now, as far as we're concerned, dogfighting aircraft don't need to be fixed wing. A helicopter can be just as good as an airplane, so if choppers are more your speed, this slot is for you. Firebirds is the classic here, it's Rotorcraft's fully Nick Cageian answer to Top Gun, and TV's Airwolf actually has some pretty insane flying that definitely isn't OSHA compliant, and the same goes for TV movies Birds of Prey and Deadly Encounter if you don't mind some serious cheese. Apocalypse Now has one of the best helicopter air to ground sequences ever, but that makes it an exception in a category of exceptions either way you slice it, so I think we're gonna have to leave it out. Capricorn 1 sees two helicopters face off against a biplane with only crop dust and maneuver skills in its arsenal. But for our Whirly Bird pick, we're going with the death-defying Gatling gun-mounted downtown LA showdown from Blue Thunder. Come on, William Murphy! Alright, knock him down. Okay, amigo. How's your auto rotation technique? When a helicopter pilot hijacks a highly armored police copter and goes rogue in order to thwart a suitably helicopter-oriented conspiracy, all of Los Angeles comes down on top of him. The extended final action sequence makes its way from a chase through the LA River with jaw-droppingly dangerous flying, an absurd skirmish with two F-16s, and a final guns-hot showdown with an armored Hughes 500 in downtown LA. And the footage is insane. The movie is insane. It's like Columbia Pictures realized they had $100 million left in their yearly helicopter budget, and it was spend it or lose it. But boy, did they spend it. With shot after shot of the closest proximity flying through live explosions three feet off the ground you have ever seen. The film is one helicopter fans, and dogfighting fans in general, just cannot miss. Finally, for our second to last pick, we arrive at the modern era. Only fourth and higher gen fighters from here on out, and the options are slim, but improving. Turns out the Air Forces worldwide are still a little touchy about loaning out a $125 million aircraft. South Korea's return to base, Pakistan's share deal, and China's Sky Hunter all lean pretty heavily on CGI to update the Top Gun feeling for a new era. And Iron Man's battle with two F-22s comes out looking pretty damn realistic if you ignore the whole Iron Man part. Last time around, we picked a dogfight from French film Le Chavier du Ciel that shot tons of gorgeous footage with actual du salt mirages that just nailed everything from the cinematography to the choreography to the edit, but something has happened since then. That's right, as of now, the new gold standard in actually shooting the damn things is none other than Top Gun Maverick. The long-anticipated, much-delayed sequel to Tony Scott's era-defining original pays off everything its years-long promo campaign has promised. And yeah, sure, Top Gun Maverick's formations in combat are still way too close, but the maneuvering is vastly more sophisticated than last time around, with out-of-plane maneuvers and holy that's close nap of the earth flying. And okay, fine, the dialogue can still be a little explainy, but Joe Kaczynski's action direction is crystal clear and polished. There is an unmistakable sense of the battlefield's layout in every moment, whether they're 30 feet off the deck or pulling through the clouds. The masks stay on 90% of the time. The G-forces the actors actually experienced are powerful enough to make even Tom Cruise look old. And the knobs and switches they use are almost always the right ones, except for the flare dispenser, that's not where that is. But when 
Maverick and Rooster climb into their warbird and take on the anonymous and menacingly reiterated enemy, fifth gen fighters, what follows is five minutes of some of the finest combat flying cinema has ever seen. It's got smart maneuvering that makes sense and has a big impact, clever tactics that change the shape of the battlefield, ammo management challenges that turn up the tension, searing visuals, earth-shaking sound design, yeah, it's really good. In a movie that's still fun, still silly, although sadly not nearly as homoerotic as its predecessor, Top Gun builds to a climax that absolutely delivers. Closing us out at number one, having already arrived at present day, there's nothing left but the future. And here, unfortunately, we have to accept a little CGI, at least until Musk and Bezos really start duking it out. Here in science fiction world, you've got AI fighter battles in stealth, alien battles in Independence Day, and a pretty fantastic showdown with drones in Oblivion. But two Tom Cruise films is more than enough for any list. Serenity's Reaver battle is absolutely badass. Wrath of Khan features a trippy clash mid-nebula. Battlestar Galactica's Battle of New Caprica has enormous scale, say that five times fast. The Expanse makes up for subpar CGI with fascinating tactics, and honestly, if you can get past the YA of it, Ender's Game's final simulation actually looks amazing. However, as far as we can tell, all the best dogfights from the future actually take place in the past way, way in the past. From our last space battle pick, the trench run that first proved to the world that epic space warfare was possible and worth making, to the return of the Jedi's Battle of Endor that one-upped it, to the too-big-to-really-understand Battle of Exegol, we think the Star Wars series hit the absolute sweet spot with Rogue One's Battle of Scarif. Admiral, this is Blue Leader standing by. This is Gold Leader standing by. This is Red Leader standing by. Sir, those are rebel ships. Get Admiral Gore, immediately! Skyward side of the Battle of Scarif is a massive extended conflict over the clear objective to take down the Shield Gate, all in support of the greater strategic goal of getting the very plans that enabled the very trench run that invented the very genre of space combat back in A New Hope. Rogue One's climactic battle is a perfect example of why it's so important in action sequences to clearly connect the tactics to the strategy to the overarching narrative goal in every moment. It's a blitz to rush the gate before it closes, countered by a lockdown to prevent further intruders, countered by a bombing run to break the lock, countered by a scrambled squadron of TIE fighters to interdict them, and on and on until the tactics culminate in a fittingly epic climax. Rogue One finds the newest generation of Star Wars films pushing the envelope of VFX achievement to an almost photorealistic degree, giving us the best looking space action anyone has ever seen, and it all feels like it really matters, which is why it's one of our picks, chronologically, for cinema's top 10 aerial dogfights of all time. So, what do you think? Disagree with any of our picks? Did we leave out any of your favorite dogfights? Are you mad that we called Rogue One Ariel since there's no air in space? Well, we'll have a chance to make it right somewhere around 2030. Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to IGN Movies and TV for more Cinefix movie lists.